everyone, Prem Ray here, and today I have Ali Basa on with us. Ali, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I mean, again, I just want to thank you for joining us today and taking the time to be on our podcast. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. So, you know, Ali, let's, this is our first time meeting online. Um, you know, where are you from? Uh, so, originally, I'm from the UK. Um, I was born in England, um, just outside of Birmingham. Uh, my mum's from uh, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, so I'm half English, half Irish, but I was I was born in England. I've pretty much lived here um, the the majority of my life. So, yeah. Nice. So fo- you were born into football then, like England. That's that's where football began. Yeah, um, I think I started kicking a ball when I was about three or four. Uh, I'm just down the park with my with my dad and stuff like that and then uh joined my local team um and that was just playing with with like school friends and, and stuff like that and then it wasn't until i was around eight or nine um which is is when i joined joined the academy so yeah i've been playing pretty much ever since i can really remember right nice so can you just paint a picture for people that haven't been to ireland or that haven't been to england um yes yeah, pretty much in terms of like football football is pretty like big over here um and it's not just like the the premier league or like the championship um i think we have four like professional leagues so the premier league all the way down to league two um which are all like you know very good leagues um and then also the league below league two which is the national league um that's also um you know a quite a competitive division and then even like leagues below that um you know, it, it goes it goes on forever. Um, the amount of you know steps there are in English football. Um, so as a country, it's like pretty um, pretty big on its football. Um, it's probably the one of the the most like um, competitive countries in the world to maybe make a, a good living um, out of the game. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, everywhere you go. There's there's a different club. Um, different club in a in a different city, so yeah, it's it's football, it's football mad over here. Got it. So, you know, what's the difference between those two countries in Canada, football wise? I think football wise, um, PPL is is still like a a new league in terms of um, it's only been going maybe four years now, going into our fourth year. Um, I think the English football system has been going on, you know, for for years and years and years. Um, and I just think it's just, it's a lot more, I think, competitive over in England in terms of, and what I mean by that is like, um, there's so many kids um, in academies and stuff um, up and down the country who will, you know, get signed to a scholarship or get signed to um, a first year like professional contract because in the academies, they have under 18s, they have under 21s, under 23s, and then the first team. So there'll be a lot of kids that will like get signed to a professional contract, but maybe never touch pitch um, in in a like a senior or first team game. And then when these guys, you know, become out of contract and become free agents, I think like the competition to get back into like a pro game is like very very hard and like very tough. So you'll see a lot of these guys that would like drop down to. Uh, maybe League Two from a Premier League academy or even like below that. And then what they'll do is they'll just try and work their way back up. Um, but I think from a club's like point of view, it's it's good for clubs because they have a lot of um, players to pick from and stuff like that. So if they don't really see you playing in their first team or they don't see a path for you into their first team, then they're probably just going to look elsewhere and like sign someone else. So I think the most, the biggest thing is just how, how competitive it is to to get um, a contract in in the UK. Got it, got it. And you, you already mentioned that the you know in, in the UK the English Premier League it's a bit more seasoned and the CPO is a bit fresh. Three years um, in, in in the making. Um, I apologize. I didn't ask you to introduce yourself to the viewers as well. Sorry. Oh no, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I'm uh, Ollie Bassett. Um, I'm 23 um, from from the UK. Um, and last year I was uh, with Pacific um, in the uh, in the Canadian Premier League. 
And you guys, again, congratulations. You guys won the Canadian Premier League for 2021. How did that, you know what, let's tap into that a bit later. The question is, how'd you go pro? Um, so I was at Villa until about 16. Um, so it got to the point where it got to a decision where like they were either, they were either going to offer me a scholarship or not. Um, so I didn't get my scholarship there. Um, and I went to, I went to Southampton shortly after that. Um, but basically what it was, Southampton have their like, their main academy that they um, train every day. And then they had a second academy like running alongside that, which is for players that maybe weren't quite ready to make the step into like the, the main academy. So I joined them and that was meant to be a, a two year um, kind of two year kind of program. Um, and they actually cut it short after a year because they weren't, they weren't, um, they weren't putting enough players from that program into their main academy. So they didn't really see, you know, a, a point in it because obviously everything comes down to money and they were spending money on, you know, this program that wasn't, you know, benefiting, you know, their club in the long run. So they cut it short, obviously, because we, we expected to do a two year kind of program. Um, I ended up dropping down to a team in league two and did my second year scholarship uh, with their youth team. Um, that's that they were called a uh, Yeovil town. They were now in the national league in England. Um, they actually got relegated a few years ago. Um, so I joined them as a as a 17 year old, and then I think six months into my um, into my second year scholarship with them, um, I made my debut for the first team, and then the first team manager um, offered me uh, an 18 month pro. So yeah, that's where it all like really um, began. To be fair, so how did it feel once you first put that pen to paper, that first contract? Um, yeah, obviously I think when you when you grow up as a kid all you talk about is, you know, becoming a professional player and having the title of being a maybe a professional footballer. Um, so I think to actually do it was pretty, um, it was pretty um, a special moment to be fair, because, you know, it's something that you always dream about, whether you dream about playing in the Premier League or the Championship or, you know, League One or League Two, you're, you're still playing football, you know, full time and making a living um, out of the game. So, yeah, it was just a lot of years of training and, and hard work and stuff like that. And to see it finally um, all come together was was a, a nice feeling, yeah. Nice. There's tons and tons of kids all around the world, especially in Canada now because you're playing in Canada, that look up to you guys. Um, what advice would you give to players that want to go pro? Um, I would say train a lot. <laughs> train a lot, a lot of training. Um, and I think you have to enjoy enjoy training and, and working as well. I think if as soon as it becomes kind of a chore and um, kind of something that you, you, you're forcing yourself to do, I think that's when you could maybe lose a little bit of enjoyment for the game. So I think the main thing is to actually just enjoy the game and enjoy playing um, and then just work as hard as you can. And then, you know, um, hopefully opportunities will, will come your way, especially now with the, with the CPL. I think there's a platform for you know, young Canadians to to hopefully go and express themselves and make a living um, out of the game, whether that be in Canada or or somewhere else in the world. So, yeah, that's that that would be my my main advice. Absolutely. So you had the chance, you know, to play, you know, in England. Now you're in Canada. What's the the difference in you know, game of speed, touch? I think. Um, the lower down you go in England, it's more um, it's more kind of physical and um, maybe a more a, more of a, like a long ball game. Um, I think the Canadian the teams in the Canadian Premier League, like in general, I think most of them like do try and play the right way um, in terms of like playing out from the back and um, and playing with the ball, um, which is something that actually surprised me going into the league. Um, you know the amount of teams that try to play. You know, out from the back. Um, I think in in England, it's it's different. Like the different levels you have, there's different types of playing and stuff like that. I think the higher you go, um, the more like tactically astute you have to be to play and understand like what the manager wants and and stuff like that. Um, I'm not saying that's not the same for the CPL, but I think in England, it's a lot more. Um, you know, the tactics that go into the game and the stuff that goes on. You know, off the pitch to get players ready for a game is is um 
is quite impressive to see actually like the high the higher up you go um but i think the canadian premier league is actually um is a is a good league and i think it will certainly you know keep keep growing and then if it keeps growing at the rate um you know the guys think it can then hopefully we can see a uh you know even more um competition in in years to come absolutely so Ali, what position do you play so i play pretty much anywhere in midfield um so i played a little bit as a six um at the start of the season and then played more as an eight um, and then i've played out wide uh, on the left a couple of times as well this year what advice would you give to players that play in that six position as well um i think the six position um mainly is just you have to obviously try and be available um all the time to to receive the ball um especially in that position because you're kind of the the link from you know the defense to the players further up the pitch and in midfield or or up front and then also doing the other side of the game as well and kind of being um a little bit aggressive when you haven't got the ball and you know breaking the play up and you know setting your team on the attack again so yeah them two main things is is probably the two things i would say um definitely being being comfortable on the ball and able to to take the ball you know sometimes under pressure um, and stuff like that great tips so you know what is it about for, what what is it about for you that you enjoy playing in that six position right like that's in the middle it's chaotic <laughs> i played in that position it's i usually like to play on the wing but for you all yeah. what what is it for you that you know makes you comfortable in the middle that you like to play in that position i think the main thing is like the start of the season i was playing or not start of the season but before coming to cpl i would play sometimes out wide and stuff um and i feel like when you play out wide you kind of only get the ball when it's on like your side of the pitch mm-hmm. um because you know you have to sometimes if the manager wants you to keep the width or stuff like that so sometimes it can be maybe frustrating when you know you can go into a space and and get the ball but i think playing in the middle you can kind of just you know rotate with the other midfielders and and you know go and get on the ball in you know different areas so i think the the biggest thing for playing in the midfield for myself is just being able to um go and get on the ball and you know um play passes with my teammates and yeah i just feel a lot more free when i play in midfield got it all right so we got to tap into you guys won the canadian cpo how did it feel um i was there in the stands you were on yeah. the play so how was that for you how was that whole experience yeah i think the whole night in in general was was probably a night that um none of us will probably ever forget to be fair um i think like just the, all the work that had been put in you know over the course of you know 9 10 months with different lockdowns and you know not knowing when the season was going to start so then going straight into a bubble and then you know playing a game every 3 or 4 days um after that um so yeah, obviously i didn't wasn't lucky enough to actually play in the final but i think just being a part of it um on the night was was obviously um amazing and then to obviously get the get the win and um break forges you know streak of of hopefully going three in a row i think yeah it was just a testament to all the work that the the staff and then um all the people like behind the scenes um i think everyone you kind of did their did their thing and they all they all you know led to us um winning the CPL so yeah it was it was a really really good night nice you guys probably had a big big party after yeah i think um we went <laughs> straight straight on the bus after the game um well I went back to the change rooms first and they kind of put like plastic all around like the changing room so when you uh, pop the champagne no one's um clothes or phones and stuff start to get wet but after that it was straight on the bus and then straight back to the hotel um uh, so we had a team we had a team dinner for about 30 40 minutes um then the boys went went and got changed and then it was straight straight downtown toronto after that um hey. and yeah that was that was the night pretty much so i'm assuming here my my last question there was um what's your most uh, memorable football moment but i'm assuming it's that one right there i would yeah i would say now i would say that for sure um i think that's one that will like stick stick in the memory for a, for a long time um i think making your your first ever like professional game is always one that you're like 
never forget either because obviously that's your your debut and stuff. But I think winning a winning a championship, you know, after nine, ten months of you know constant work, day in day out, um, I don't think anything anything can really top that. So yeah, I would say I would say now winning the winning the CPL. Got it. And you know, are you away from family right now, or is your family with you? Uh, no, so I'm back home in the UK now. Um, to end of the season, I went to um, I went to see my girlfriend in Ottawa for about seven, eight days, um, and then I'm back in the UK now, um, just with family in the off season and stuff, and kind of doing my own thing, training and and doing you know small sessions with with some of my some of my other mates that are playing in in Europe, but not currently in season. So yeah, I'm back home in in England um, as we speak. Nice. Okay. So that, and that's good. You're keeping fit, obviously for next season. Um, everyone's going to be coming for you guys because you guys just won. Um, but with saying that, you know, the question I wanted to ask you is you're, you're away from family in Canada. How do you deal with that? You know, I think that's something that players, young players, especially that, that haven't experienced that don't know what it is yet. And what advice would you uh, share with them to prepare for that? Um, I think, yeah, firstly, I think there's a lot of things that like go on in football that people like may not see or like appreciate like behind the scenes, like even little things like moving away from your family or like not being around friends or like moving into a new uh, country or culture and stuff like these are the little things that, you know, people may not take into consideration. But like for me, I, I don't think it was that um, that difficult and hard um, to be fair. I've lived away from from home just through playing football for you know numerous years now so it was kind of just a you know a, a new it was just kind of a new country and something that I was you know pretty comfortable with but I think for other people doing it um, I think if you want to you know maybe make the next step or um, you know head to Europe from North America then it's something that you're going to have to do to be able to do that so I think it's just you know getting comfortable with it and overcoming that and then kind of never losing sight of, you know, what you came there um, or went there to achieve, really. Because, um, you know, family will always be back home. So if you do ever need to go back, then you kind of just hop on a plane and go back. That's what someone said to me the first time I did it. So, yeah, I don't think it was too it was too uncomfortable. And it's something that I've been pretty used to now for the last, you know, four or five years. Awesome. Great tips. So, uh, Ali, I just want to ask you this last question before we tap into the fun questions. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't know here, but the signing process in England, did you have an agent to help you with that? Or is that something that you just did by yourself? Was that to go to go pro or? To go pro. Um, not to go pro, no. So, when I was at Yeovil, it was the the first manager that was there before he got sacked, he was the kind of one that just came directly to me when I was in the youth team, kind of went through the youth team coach at the time because um, I didn't really see the the need for really having an agent um, because he was kind of the one that was mentoring me and like looking after me at the time. So he was really good friends with the, the first team manager at the time. So he kind of just went through him and then he said to me, you know, they've offered you a contract, like, this, this, and this, and then they kind of gave it to me, and then within thirty days, I'd I'd signed it. Um, so no, I didn't have an agent when I was in England. Um, I had an agent for the first time when I was in playing in New Zealand overseas, mm. and I think some countries like that, like you, you do need an agent because um, you know there's only so far your connections or contacts can get you, and then you kind of need someone else to help you make. Um, make the next step so that's when I first um, spoke to my agent that I'm currently with now I've been with him for the last two or three years now so yeah it was only until I moved to New Zealand which is when I first uh, first got an agent mm -hmm. so that's that's international um, an international spot that you'd be taking as well can you just quickly uh, list the countries uh, the team and league that that you've played in all of them yeah um so yeovil town was the first um first team in england the first senior team professional team uh, that was in league two at the time so the fourth 
um, fourth division um, in England. Um, and then from there, I went to play in the um, top division in New Zealand, so the New Zealand Premiership. Uh, I was there for around two years. Um, and then start of 2020, I moved from New Zealand to Australia, which is um, pretty much next door to, to New Zealand, um, and played in a played for a team in the essentially the the league below the A League. So the A League is what Americans would compare to like MLS. It's probably not as good as the MLS like right now, but it's kind of at a similar similar level, maybe a little bit below. Um, so I played in the league below the MLS, um, and then when COVID hit and stuff like that, I came back to the UK um, and played non-league in the UK um, to keep my fitness up and stuff like that before I uh, I went to the CPL with with Pacific. So that, that's that's what I've been doing for the last four, four or five years now. Got it. Nice. I, I'd love to get into the nitty gritty with you, like the little details, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know we're over it. I apologize about that. So um, let's just no, dive you're in. Right. Thanks. Let's just dive into uh, the fun questions. Um, all right, so they're like five speed questions, Ali. You gotta like answer them quick. All right. <laughs> all right, who's your favorite team? Aston Villa. Uh, favorite player? Santi Cazorla. Favorite cleats? Mercs, always Mercs. Yes, sir. Favorite food? Favorite food, um, chicken pasta. Pasta and favorite artist? I'm gonna guess Drake. I seen the OVO sweater. <laughs> no, no, so I had that. I picked that up when I was um, when I was in Canada this year. Actually, Drake is good. Um, I'd say like Drake, but I'd say Dave, the UK UK oh. artist, Dave. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check him out. I like UK music too. That was, yeah, he's good. Dave what, Dave? Dave, it's just Dave, D-A-V-E. Dave. Okay, Dave. He did, he, did a, he did a song with Drake a couple years ago. What's your favorite song by Dave? Um, I would say Streatham. Well, yeah, Ali, this was a blast. Um, before we go, I just want to uh, thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Soccer Nation podcast. No problem. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. And where can the viewers find you if, you know, players want to reach out to you and get in contact with you? Um, so my Twitter and Instagram, uh, my Twitter is, I believe, Ollie Bassett 28 um, I might have to just check that. Um, and then my Instagram is, is O Bassett. So okay. that's, uh, that, they're the two platforms that I use. Got it. Okay, guys, reach out to them there.